Well, hey guys, I'm in Wheeling, West Virginia, over my shoulders, the Capitol Theater. One of the reasons I came here is to check out the streetscape. It's about a $35 million project. I was reading on Facebook last week how Clarksburg applied for a $4 million project and Glen Elkin was declined. Um, Wheeling's a little less than twice the size of Clarksburg, but they asked for nine times as much money and got it. I think that speaks to differences in how Wheeling and Clarksburg view state and federal money. Clarksburg tends to view it as a piggy bank that we can raid for our own purposes, whereas Wheeling and other successful towns understand that the state and federal governments have their own agenda you need to piggyback on. Up front, I want to say that this was five years of planning here in Wheeling. They didn't just shoot from the hip. They took the understanding time to understand what was going on. I also want to point out that this is Main Street. This is a road. They didn't just ask for money for sidewalks in some area, residential area. They understood that the Department of Highways or the DOT's emphasis, area of concern, is roads. Roads that connect things primary roads. With that understanding, or with that is a growing understanding that road construction often, and the focus on the automobile often tears towns apart. It has effects on cities that aren't really that good. And so there's been a shift toward complete streets of bike lanes, which we have here, or we are getting here, of sidewalks, which are being done here. Clarksburg, did none of that. They just asked, hey, would you all give us some sidewalks? DOT's naturally gonna say no. Sidewalks in a residential area are not our concern. Fix it yourself. Another thing to understand is that the federal government is restricted by our constitution, our system of government, to what it can invest in. Over time, we've pushed the limits on that. But the original purpose of highway construction was to facilitate interstate commerce and especially the movement of postal traffic. It was 22 years after the Constitution was signed before the federal government invested in the first road. It was called the National Road. It ran from Cumberland, Maryland through Wheeling, crossing the river right here at the time using a ferry to St. Louis. It facilitated the settlement of the Midwest, which at the time was territories owned by the federal government and sold off or were given to homesteaders. After World War I, there was an understanding that national defense required more rapid movement of motor vehicles than the mud roads or, or stone turnpikes allowed. And so investments in paved roads were made by the federal government, creating the U.S. highway system. This is also US 40. On down the street here is US 250. And then after World War II, there was an investment in what we call the Eisenhower Interstate Highway System modeled after the German Autobahn. This was done to allow military equipment to move even faster across the country, but also to facil facilitate the movement of industrial traffic and support the war effort. When we ask for federal money for road projects, we have to bear in the back of our mind the original purpose of federal money and, and constitutional justification for it. The further you get from the core mission, the more likely you are to be declined. A sidewalk in a residential neighborhood on a tertiary street is not going to be a high priority unless you can justify it some other way. I'm getting rained on, but I want to make a real quick point about this bridge. It was opened in 1849 to carry the National Road across the Ohio River so that wagons would no longer have to use a ferry. It was closed in 2018 because trucks and buses would follow their GPS, take a shortcut across this bridge despite the tonnage limitations. They damaged the bridge. It's, it's closed to vehicle traffic now and may not ever open again. Foot traffic is still allowed. As you can see from this plaque, it's a national historic landmark. It's considered vital to the history and culture of our country. And so the United States government has 
what it considers a legitimate interest in maintaining not only the bridge, but the streets around it, the neighborhood around it. I'll come back to this subject. Another one of the priorities of the federal government, at least since the pandemic and the Biden stimulus, is the replacement of old water lines, particularly lead water lines. Behind me, you can see a new manhole there. Wheeling has decided to come through and replace water mains that were laid in 1886. I'm not sure that they're lead, but they're old and they needed to be replaced. When a grant administrator sees that, they see an efficient use of resources. They're tearing the street up, replacing water and sewer lines, and then paving it, putting the brick streetscape on. In Clarksburg, you heard city officials say, we can't just put pipes in the ground, claim that we need new sidewalks, lobby for sidewalk money, and then after $90 million lead line replacement deal is signed, express concern that the service line replacement is gonna tear up the sidewalks. Grant administrators will look at that as not really something they want to invest taxpayer dollars in. Wheeling has also taken that money to dig up and replace old fuel tanks that were sitting at the confluence of Big Wheeling Creek and the Ohio River. That's something that's in the national interest and the federal government will pay for because it affects the drinking water of tens of millions of people downstream of the Ohio River. They've also replaced combined sewer overflows, which is something Clarksburg desperately needs to do. And then back behind me, you see those buses? There's a bus station there that will be improved as part of the streetscape project. That's three additional things they've taken care of in, on top of the streetscape. This is the kind of stuff that makes a grant administrator happy. Although while it's much more money than any of the individual pieces, it's a more efficient use of that money. And in the long run, it accomplishes more and it does it once for all. You're not doing a little bit of work, three or four million here and then destroying it later to do a different three or four million dollar project. Behind me is Wheeling Center Market. It was built in 1853. The federal government has deemed preservation of historic building and cultural assets to be a national priority. They make funding available for that. They have laws to protect buildings and encourage preservation. Wheeling has aligned itself with that. Things that date back before the Civil War to our early Republic are especially valuable. Wheeling has recognized that value by investing in streetscapes, working with landowners to build this area up into something that's pretty nice. When a grant administrator looks at that, they see another checkbox, another efficiency. Unfortunately, Clarksburg seems to see its historic assets as, as a liability, as things that need to be removed. The reasoning for this could be many, many reasons, but in the end, it's destructive of, our, of the things we say we want to accomplish. Wheeling shows their commitment to historic preservation by going so far as to purchase the buildings behind me. I came up here 10, 12 years ago to a show at the Capitol Theater and we were all walking down trying to find a bar to go to afterwards and we saw the Sportsman's Club and I was like, no, it was open at that time. I was like, no, that's a, that's a place where you want to buy heroin or cocaine and get a whore. It's not a, not a place for upper middle class folk to walk into. <laughs> Um, but then I find out this whole block has historically uh, been associated with gambling. Uh, the restaurant or the place with the canopy in front was one cellar steakhouse. The second floor was a casino operated by former Wheeling mob boss Bill Lias. Sportsman's Club behind it was associated with his successor boss, Paul Hankish. And uh, just, just back here around the corner, Behind me, behind the 7-Eleven, back there, Rogers Hotel was uh, was another epicenter of gambling under Paul Hankish, mob boss up until 1990, run by Butch Florio. My viewers who aren't even from Clarksburg will recognize that last name. His son, Mike, is operator of Pro Football Talk. 
associated with NBC Sports today. But look where we are, okay? Those are buildings that Clarksburg would want to tear down. City Wheeling bought them to find an investor to rehab them. They're right beside the Wheeling newspaper. I'm not aware of Wheeling newspaper constantly arguing to demolish them. And then right there is West Virginia Independence Hall. You know, the Pierpont fellow who would be West Virginia's version of George Washington has his statue out right there. And before there was a Wheeling Convention, there was a Clarksburg Convention. At the Courthouse Plaza, where the Clarksburg Convention happened, the Daughters of the Confederacy came through in 1953 and removed a statue in honor of Union veterans and put one up of Stonewall. And now, Stonewall Jackson is the only person we hear about. We have other people, Cyrus Vance, his mom's house is sitting right down there where the Historical Society is. We took money from the Hist Historical Society this year. We took money from the Oddfellow Cemetery where Pierpont is, is buried. Grant administrators do notice this kind of stuff. What is our commitment to historic preservation? If there's none, that kind of blocks off a whole route of funding for us. I'm standing under the canopy of the Capitol Theater waiting for heavy rain to pass. There's a lady named Betty Nutting who's credited with saving at least 20 historic structures in downtown Wheeling. You may recognize the last name. Her son, Bob Nutting Jr., uh, is the CEO of Ogden Newspapers, but also is the principal owner of the Pittsburgh Pirates. For years, she sat on the board is co-chair of Vandalia Heritage Foundation. The other co-chair was Art Rooney, who was once CEO of the Pittsburgh Penguins and cousin to the Rooneys who own the Pittsburgh Steelers. She worked for several years, many years, as the office administrator of Vandalia Heritage Foundation with Laura Coons, CEO. She's known as the grandmother, the godmother of historic preservation in the state of West Virginia. I bring her up because last year, a couple years ago, when there was a proposal from the mayor to give Vandalia Heritage Foundation 25,000 so they could get $150,000 in match grants to mitigate and remediate the falling bricks on the Waldo, a lot of people on the city council were like, I'm sorry, I don't know these people, who are they? And then our past uh, city manager, Harry Polk, said, well, they're popcorn farts. Popcorn farts. One of the things you need to do when you begin a streetscape project and, and want to revitalize an area is consult with the experts. Unfortunately, Clarksburg does not even be, know what they don't know. They ridicule and antagonize the experts because maybe that makes them insecure. Maybe there's someone else with a different agenda feeding them bad information. Whatever the case is, that's another thing that needs to change. So to conclude, there's a reason why Governor Justice accepted Wheeling's $35 million ask for federal money and threw out Clarksburg's $4 million ask. Wheeling bothers to find out what the federal government's priorities are and align their strategy with those priorities and look for efficiencies of ways they, they can kill two birds with one stone. Clarksburg has a very piecemeal approach and they treat the state and federal government's priorities with contempt. What I mean by that is they're given $5 million to build a multi-story 300 stall garage to complement the Waldo Hotel. And instead, they just buy additional land and build a, a, a flat lot with it. We get $6.3 million and are encouraged to use it for water and sewer projects. And then we literally laugh, literally laugh at the water board president when he asks for money to fix the lead water crisis. We say, we can't just put pipes in the ground with this money because in 10 years, nobody will see it. I don't like that. 
And I'm sure that higher politicians don't like that and grant administrators don't like that. These are things that have to change before we line up this kind of money and bring it into Clarksburg. And everything I've ever heard from experts on this, they say it's easier to elect politicians who understand this from the get-go than it is to, to retrain politicians that are set in another way of thinking. Have a blessed weekend. I'll talk at you later.